we're talking about self as what would people would call sometimes the ego. Yeah. To me, it's different. It's a sense of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. It's like a vague weather front in your life that you feel like you're a long-lasting, independent, separate entity, usually verified by being seemingly in a body. So there you're in that condition. And so it says being convinced, which means to believe with certainty that self has defeated us, self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. We will now look at its common manifestations, meaning self. And then we go into an inventory process called we look at resentments, fears, and harming other people in the pursuit of what we want. Now, the beauty of it is most people that I know think that the fears and the resentments are theirs. They own the fears and the resentments. That's what I call being identified as self, yes? Because self is expressing itself through us, but we're claiming its, its expressions as ours. That, to me, is the root of the problem. It's the trance. It's the, uh, and that trance is reinforced every day by the, the narrative in one's head, yes? The little story of Paul doing whatever and historically being there and is going to be there in the future, so I better start worrying about how Paul will be in the future, all that. If that happens, if you real, if you see a resentment as just a resentment, it's much easier to get over than if you see it as my resentment. And if you have, if there's a fear arises or fear arises, I found it's much easier to travel with that than if it's my fear. If there's, if I've done something that a, a reaction that was, let's say, really bad and hurt people, I can live with that a lot and be also much more accountable if I see it as just an alcoholic reaction instead of my reaction. That's where I found a lot of my of the freedom that I travel in during the day. Yeah. It was a simple thing. If you took a like a chalkboard and you put the word sex down and you put money down and you put relationships down and if we had a scale and you could weigh the meaning of those, like sex, if you, were ha if you weren't having any, you would probably be heavy. Yeah? Sex, money, if you don't have any money, yeah, it would be, have more importance, and relationships. But add just one little word in front of it, it changes everything. It, it creates a tonnage of weight, and that's the word my, my money, my sex, my relationships. That, to me, is what I call the bondage to selfing, yeah? You're identifying with things that occur in life as yours, and you're taking them very, very personally, and that's causing the mental suffering. Because I can say this with confidence, because that's when, that's, when that little bondage was broken, that's when I really started traveling lighter, not just at retreats or on a nice Friday night with Kenny G music, you know, in a nice little, you know, mud bath area. But no, doing whatever I had to do. And, uh, and it's verified its validity, even though it doesn't need any, over, because for years I, the traveling has been going lighter. Yeah. So there you have it. And I'm just in a position, in a community, there's just a lot of mental suffering. And people need an immunity to thought, at least. And I found this is how it can be entertained. It can at least open up a gap between the thought and the my. And there's some freedom between that, those two little words. So. You called it immunity to thought. Yes, yeah. In other words, the immunity to thought is there's a, there's a listening. You hear it, I mean, but there's no need to listen. You don't listen. That, that, that excess amount of attention that can change everything in your experience here is not given over to the thought because it's not seen as yours. Yeah. To me, as soon as something becomes mine, the meaning I give it gets to be a lot heavier. There are a lot more importance. When you extract the my, which is a verb, you're, that's what I call identify, identifying with self. It's a verb that the mind's doing all the time. When you extract that my, you'll travel lighter. Yeah. Instead of like body, body and my body are two different experiences for the one who's there to entertain either of those views. Yeah. So this is what I attempt to share because if I've seen, I mean, the amount of people who suffer in my community is unbelievable. I've been involved for 21 years and that's where I participate. Yeah. Because in a sense, I was in hell 
and something took me out of hell. Now, in my conditioning, if something t- takes me out of hell, I get become immensely grateful to it. And that's what recovery programs did for me. They took me out of hell. And so I know, I know how to recognize the bus. I can tell people that are in hell, there's a bus out of there. And hopefully yeah. <laughs> they'll get on it. If they don't, they don't. But I have, an, I have a strong drive to participate in that. So when you just say the bus, is that kind of like just saying, okay, uh, just take the my out of the equation, and then people will say, well, how do I do that? And you just say, well, just give it a try, you know, and see what the result is. Or, or I mean, do they have to have a, a discovery, some inner discovery that says, oh, yeah, really, it isn't me? Or do you just say, uh, give it a shot and, uh, and uh, see what you see? Well, in the situation I'm in, I say give it a shot, but I also I – also, uh, we make it available for by having three meetings a week to have it repeated to each other. Yes, because if there is a trance of mind, it's like waking someone up in a room. Some people, all you got to do is knock lightly and they wake up. Others, you got to sort of put a big alarm on and then they wake up. Others, they wake up, but when as soon as you leave, they're back to sleep again, seemingly. So there's this thing. So if if you offer an invitation, it's nice that there's someone available like on a regular basis, they keep entertaining that invitation. So that's what we do around here. We have three meetings a week and then I have retreats and, and uh, you know, all it takes is one person to be sitting in that certainty and there'll be a transmission.